Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iwineradio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there. Hi, this is Joanne Sidney Lesner. I am a novelist, playwright, and performer, and I invite you to read my book, Pandora's Bottle, which is inspired by the true story of the world's most expensive bottle of wine. You can read more about Pandora's Bottle and my other books at joannelesner.com. Welcome to Wine and Dine Radio. I'm Lynn Creelo Chamberlain. Hi there, this is Andreas Larson. Hi, this is John Capon. My name is Mathur Jaffrey. Hi, my name is Heike Platter. I'm from the Alto Adige region or Sud Tyrol. Hi, my name is Paul Dolan. I am absolutely passionate about growing organic and biodynamic fruit for our wines. Hello, my name is Lorena Garcia. Hello, my name is Fritz Maytag. This is Joyce Bach. I'm the author of Foodie Fight. Hi, this is Lydia Mandave, founder of 29 Cosmetics. Cheers, this is Rob Barnett, CEO and founder of ThinVillage.com, where wine lovers connect. Of course, as I always say, with so many people that we introduce on Wine and Dine, one person leads to another. And our conversation a couple weeks ago, learning about Hudson Valley and all the, the, the website that will, enjoy, will lead us to all the different things that we can go and visit and taste, led us to this interview today on Wine and Dine with author Joanne Sidney Lesner. And the name of her novel is Pandora's Bottle. And I'm going to read a little bit of her bio, but you can read more with the link that I'll provide to you. Joanne Sidney Lesner has written the book and lyrics to several musicals with her husband, composer, conductor Joshua Rosenblum, including the cult hit for Matt's Last Tango, which received its off-Broadway premiere at the New York Theatre Company. She is a regular contributing writer to Opera News and holds a BA in Music, summa cum laude from Yale University. She's also active as a singer and actor, and she has performed on and off Broadway. Pandora's Bottle is her first novel, and Joanne was raised in the Hudson Valley and lives in New York City with her husband and two children. And this book is, oh, you know, it's, it's a, it starts off slow, and then it really gets to the point of you can't put it down. And Joanne, could you please give us a little bit of insight, Is kind of give us a little bit of a synopsis about the book and then how you came up with, what was the inspiration for the book? Sure. Well, it's, um, it's about a man named Cy Hampton who is obsessed, has always been obsessed with a particular bottle of wine that had been owned by Thomas Jefferson. And he has an opportunity to buy the wine at auction, and he spends a half a million dollars to purchase this wine. 
And he's really invested a lifetime interest in wine, and he's also at a point in his life where he's looking to find some renewed vigor and something that's going to make him feel special again, particularly where women are concerned. <laughs> and um, he, so he, he's got a lot personally invested in this bottle. And while in, in actual fact a bottle dating back to 1787 would really no longer be drinkable, I worked out um, quite accurately and with some research a way that this bottle would still not only be drinkable but could potentially be this absolutely ambrosial drink. So he invites this young woman that he's trying to impress, he invites her to um, share the wine with him. And um, this is going to sound like I'm giving away a big thing, but I'm actually not. The waiter serving the bottle drops it, and it shatters on the floor, and all the uh, assembled wine aficionados leap to the floor and start licking it up. And it's really, the book is really about what happens after this event, how Sai puts his life back together after this this really somewhat emotionally catastrophic event, how the young woman deals with this situation that she's been thrust into, what it means for the hapless waiter who caused the disaster, and for the young woman who owns the restaurant who is trying to get her restaurant on the map and what this unwanted publicity, how the unwanted publicity changes things for her. So it's... um, it's really uh it's really um the coming together of those particular four people and how this event changes their lives so gentlemen you know if you are going through a midlife crisis this is something that you might want to read all it's not just a chick book it's definitely for for men as well Absolutely. I, one of the things that has really thrilled me is the, the range of people who've responded positively to the book, men and women, and also people who are enophiles and people who know little to nothing about wine. Um, I, I had to educate myself about wine in, in writing the book, and I was very fortunate to be published by Flint Mine Press, Bob Bedford and Linda Pirro, who published Hudson Valley Wine Magazine, and, and they were really able to fill in some of the blanks for me. There's only so much research you can do, and there are always things that somebody who really knows the topic is going to be able to catch you on, and, um, and they were incredibly helpful in guiding me to more detail to, to flesh out the wine element of the book. So I really tried to find a way to tell the story so that it would be appealing to people who weren't knowledgeable, so they weren't yes. intimidated, but also that people who are knowledgeable aren't going to read it and think you'd never drink that wine with that meal. She doesn't know what she's talking about. So. Or that you are either talking down your nose or, or up your nose. Right. I really am trying to just tell it, you know, tell it, what is, I think, a fairly universal story. The tagline on the front of the book is what happens when you pin all your hopes on a single event and it all goes horribly wrong. Because we all are tempted to do that. If I can just get the right job, if I just meet the right guy, if I just yeah. could buy the perfect house. And you know, half the time, when if we are fortunate enough to get this thing we think we want, it doesn't deliver on the promise that we've invested in. And so Cy gets this bottle that he has pinned all his hopes on, and of course it literally goes crashing to the floor. Mm. You know, I, I, I didn't put two and two together until, uh, until recently that your sister is the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. My cousin. My cousin. Oh, my first cousin. cousin. Yeah. I Debbie interviewed her Gipendo. a couple years ago. She's fabulous, and she, I mean, you know, it, when, I, when I, as I said before, it was very important to me to make the wine potentially drinkable, and I said to her, how can I do this? And she put me in contact with Michael Miliori at White Cliff Vineyards, and Michael has a background in chemistry, and he, he, he led me through the steps that a winemaker could create a wine that wouldn't even begin to be drinkable for 100 to 150 years, so it sets back the entire process. Um, and and that and that was that was terrific. And then in the process of visiting Michael at Whitecliff, I had this brainstorm of setting part of the book in the Hudson Valley and some of the Hudson Valley vineyards. And um, at the time that I met with him, I wasn't sure how the book was going to end. And it was a wonderful case of yes. research providing me with a very significant part of the story. I love the ending. Thank you. Love that because it's because I I I 
I well, like, oh my gosh, the ending of of um, Downton Abbey is it, it has me so upset that I don't want to watch it next season. <laughs> we, that's an entirely different conversation. Yeah, but if there's going to be a hope of a romance, I want it to be a positive. Uh, you know, yeah. I I don't want it to be a cliffhanger like you you know that it's going to be over with. So well, I not love to be too not to be too obnoxious and self serving about it. But the last thing out of Pandora's box is hope. <gasps> yes. So. Of course, the book ends on what I like to think is a very hopeful, a hopeful note. Yes. Um, but you did. You asked before um, the inspiration for the book, um, and this I definitely would love to talk about because it's based on. It was inspired by an actual event, which I imagine some of your listeners will be familiar with. In 1989, a, um, a wine collector named William Sockelin had a bottle of 1787 Chateau Margaux at the Four Seasons restaurant. And now there are multiple versions of what happened that night. Some people say a waiter dropped the bottle. Some people say he knocked it over accidentally on purpose. In any case, it fell to the floor. The bottle was valued at half a million dollars. It fell to the floor, and all of the assembled wine aficionados in their finery threw caution to the winds and threw themselves to the floor and started licking the carpet of the Four Seasons restaurant. I Mm -hmm. thought that was hilarious um, and ridiculous and, and kind of a wonderful a wonderful moment of human nature breaking through all of the all of the um, you know artifice of, of social propriety or you know you're at the four seasons the last thing you you think you're going to be doing is groveling on the floor licking the licking the carpet yeah. um, and and I thought my husband actually thought it might make a good musical Oh my god. So Pandora's bottle was almost musical. And it didn't it, it didn't quite sing and I filed the idea away for many years yeah. and um then came I was looking for a book idea and I, I literally had a eureka moment at one thirty in the morning and went, Oh, that wine story, it's a book and I got out of bed and wrote the auction scene until about four that morning. Um so the, the it was interesting because when I thought about that event the after I giggled about uh, at the idea of them licking the wine off the floor, I thought, well, but what kind of person spends five hundred thousand dollars on yeah. one bottle, and what would that feel like to lose it? Oh, and what would it feel like to be the waiter who dropped it? Oh, yeah. and what would it feel like to be the girl? And I just spun out this, you know, four four person what if scenario from an actual event. How long did it take you to write this from from that moment forward? Three months. Oh my gosh! Three months. It it was like channeling, um, and as I said, I didn't actually figure out how I was going to end it until about two months into the process. To be fair, I had the idea had been percolate, percolating for about eight years um, okay. after our first musical for Mott Last Tango, which played off Broadway in two thousand two thousand one over the holiday season. We were looking for this for another idea, and, and my husband thought of this and we and I sketched it out and in fact the idea of the four principal principal characters dates back to that time and I knew of course what the midpoint of the book was and I I knew what story I wanted to tell but it was it was really one of those kind of divine things where it just I actually was doing an operetta I was singing the role of Phoebe in Gilbert and Sullivan's Yeoman of the Guard in the same season and I I got I started writing the book the weekend I got cast, and it was a three-month rehearsal period, and I finished the book during our tech week. Oh, my gosh. What? Oh, well, my nuts. gosh. So it, it, will, <laughs> it will always be associated with that uh, very intense time in your life. For me, yes. Although I have to say, you know, of course I went back and there was some editing to be done. As I said before, Bob and Linda um, really helped me flesh out uh, things on the det- detail level. But, um, yeah, it was a quick, quick write for me. Joanne, one last question. Isn't yes. there some? Isn't there a promo coming on with the book that it's available? Yeah, well, it's available, um, you know, in hard copy on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and um, if there's going to be an ebook promotion uh, next Tuesday and Wednesday, March fifth and sixth. The ebook book will be available for two days for free. Okay, cool. We'll have links up for all that. Joanne yes, Sidney Lessner, author of Pandora's Bottle. Thank you so very much Thank for joining you, us. Thank you, Lynn. Oh, I'm telling you guys, it, women. And men, it is a good read on Wine and Dine. I really like the book. You guys see Pandora's Bottle? It's a good read. It really is a good read. Now you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. 
Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iwineradio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us, and we'll go from there. 